We are coming from the police headquarters in the Paul Farquharson building on East Street, and the police are celebrating the 178th anniversary of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, and they're doing so in grand style with a number of activities in the month of March. And on our program, we are going to be discussing policing with a number of officers here today. And uh, we are delighted to have uh, with us, uh, for starters, uh, Superintendent Shanta Knowles, who is uh, the person responsible for uh, police information and media relations and uh, we are going to be joined by a number of senior police officers uh, today. Good morning and welcome. Good morning sir, thank uh, you for having us. It's good to see you here today. Thank you so much. And uh, you uh, have made uh, great arrangements for us to interview a number of your senior officers and we thank you so very much. Thank you, too, and I'm glad to have them here to showcase their talent, but more importantly, to tell you and tell the Bahamian public about the Royal Bahamas Police Force and what it is we do day to day. Uh, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, um, based on the number of departments that you have, uh, you are an institution that is self-contained, it seems. Uh, you have people responsible for even um, statistics that and research and all the rest of it. That is, that is so true. Mm -hmm. That is correct. That department is headed by Chief Superintendent Gabriel Pratt and her team, and she will be here today to, sp to speak to you and give you a, a little brief on what it is that she do and also the history of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. As I look around this room, this um, grand room, I see the uh, large photographs of the various commissioners of police. And um, I said to uh, my uh, people here this morning that I have interviewed everyone except one, except one, from uh, Mr. Salatiel Thompson uh, straight through to uh, Mr. Ellison Greenslade. And today we hope to have an interview with the commissioner. And then your, your task would, be, would have been completed with all seven commissioners. Uh, isn't that something? Yes. Well, tell us what is going to happen in the month of uh, March, uh, leading up to your seven, 178th anniversary. Well, that is correct. We are celebrating 178 years of dedicated service to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And we start our month of activities off with the Fun Run Walk, which is tomorrow morning, beginning at 6 a.m. from police headquarters. Registration is still ongoing, so it's not too late. You can come on down to police headquarters or call, and we'd be happy to get someone over to register you. Registration is only $15. That includes a T-shirt, a, a tote bag, and a, and a gift bottle. Why are you doing this? All of this is, in, is so that we can build the camaraderie between officers. Uh, interdivisional competitions so that we can also strengthen our ties with the communities but most importantly all of this and the funds derived from the activities go to the Royal Bahamas Police Defendants Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. That fund uh, supports of, uh, the, the families, the children of officers who were killed in the line of duty. From 1962 to 2015 we have had 28 officers killed in the line of duty, and we still have children, about 15 children on the program. And we support their education, their daily living expenses, that kind of thing. So we're asking the public to support this worthy cause. And in addition to that, uh, you're going to have um, speech contests. That is correct. A debate and all the rest of it? Yes, yes, sir. We have our final debate competition is on the 14th here at Paul Farquharson Center. Uh, we will be debating a, a team of officers from New Providence. We'll debate a team of officers from Grand Bahama. And that promises to be very exciting. What is going to be the subject? I'm not certain at this time what the topic is, but I'm, I'm certain it's going to be something very interesting. And I do invite you to come out and listen. You will, be, you will be impressed with the talent that we have here. I am absolutely certain that you're going to have a great debate. Um, just recently, I addressed um, assistant superintendents uh, of police at the police college and I found them to be 
quite cerebral, um, to say the least. And uh, we have another one uh, here today who is quite cerebral, uh, the uh, Senior Assistant Commissioner of Police, uh, Mr. Stephen Dean. Uh, Mr. Dean, it's good to see you. It's always a pleasure to be here, Mr. Jones, be uh, sharing inside a great giant like yourself in the media world. Uh, you're very kind, Mr. Dean. Uh, you've been on the force now for how long? Uh, getting ready to, on the downward trend, well over 30, 37 years. 37 yes, years? Yes, mm, And you have m many miles to go. Oh. Um, many miles to go in this in this life. God, God, God spared me life. I'm talking about on the force itself. Well, God spared me life. You know, and my thing is this: my I sh what I should be doing, and I should be setting that kind of example for preparing persons like the Shanta Knowles and the other persons underneath. A lot of us reach this point and believe that we have a stake, or we was granted a piece of property in this organization. The reality is, I got to prepare younger officers, and I want to be sitting back. If mm -hmm. I'm an eight-mile rock, if I'm a Guana somewhere under another tree when I can see younger officers that you had something to do with their life yeah. and see where they are, that's important. I want to live to see that. Yes, well, you, um, you are on a force where there have been many uh, senior officers, and many of them are still uh, yes. alive today, yes. uh, who have given yeoman service uh, to, to this country. No, no question about it. Uh, you know, um, we remember when the uh, first um, Bahamian was installed as commissioner in an independent Bahamas, Mr. Salithiel Thompson, back in 1973. Right. And he served until 1978, uh, 1988. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he passed the baton on to Mr. Mr. Gerald Bartlett, yeah. uh, who served from 1988 uh, to uh, 1997, I think, yeah. it, uh, thereabouts. Uh, but um, the Royal Bahamas Police Force is a dynamic organization, isn't it? I, I'm no question about it. I'm, I'm telling you that, and if, like many others, if I have to, have to do this again, I, I would want to go back into the training school. I want to work in every department. I mean, it's, it's just something you have to live. It is a university. Every day you're learning something immaterial to what rank you in. It's exciting. When you know you're making an impact in the country, when you know you're doing service, it's about service. It's not about the salary. Mm. It's about service to the Bahamian people. Uh, it's like a lay university, eh? Oh, yeah. It is. Yes. It is. It is. Multifaceted, multidimensional. No question. No question. And, and you've seen uh, quite a number, you being a senior officer, Shanta uh, Knowles, a superintendent, you've seen many young women uh, who have come up through the ranks uh, as you have. I, I, have. I didn't, I neglected to ask you how you got started. <laughs> well, I, I came, I'm, I hail from the, the, uh, the beautiful island of Eleuthera, okay. Rock Sound Settlement. So I had examples, positive examples, such as Allardyce Strawn and Edmund Hall. And those are the people I, I wanted to follow in their footsteps mm. so that I, I could be like them. And I'm glad that I've had that opportunity to come to the Royal Bahamas Police Force. They have accepted me and mold me. They build on the, on, the, on the standards that my parents have laid, and I'm here today. And I'm glad to see that there are other women in the Royal Bahamas Police Force who have also taken that opportunity to join such a noble organization and to give contribution to our community. And you have uh, a, a woman who is an assistant commissioner. That is right, Ms. Mm. Ass Assistant Commissioner D Davis Delancey. Uh, is she the highest ranking um, ever? At this time, she's now the third assistant commissioner, female. Female, okay. That is, uh, that is I remember the days when um, women joined the, yes. uh, the, the force for the first time. You remember that, Mr. Dean? I heard about that. I was you heard about that? I heard about that. Ah, Mr. Dean, uh, don't tell me that I'm your senior. Uh, I don't believe that I'm your senior, but anyway. Uh, but um, women have played a vital role um, on the uh, force, eh? And no question, you know, and I mean, we, you know, we just can't live without them. And I can tell you, it, it works out well. It compl everybody complements each other, so there's no, when you go into the training school, there's no special training for the women police officers and the male. They're the same, everybody have the same fighting chance. It's the same fighting chance as the promotion. We have seen over the years, things have changed. In time past, we really, it's unheard of of women, female assistant commissioner of police and higher ranks is rare. It was rare to even find a superintendent. It was rare. But now you have them all through the force, all through the force, aspiring. And, you know, we, who knows? In the near distant future, we could have a, a, a commissioner of police. 
Let, oh, let's yeah. let's talk about policing generally, um, and uh, because um, policing changed in the Bahamas over the many years, um, uh, from the uh, days when I was a, a little uh, boy growing up, um, we, we 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 saw the evolution of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, haven't we? Yes. Um, no, no question about it. Policing has changed from going at growing the days when you grow up. When you even see the police on the beat, the police didn't, there was no need for an officer to have a firearm. Um, even when I came into the system, we used to go on patrols without a firearm, and, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. but you had a, night, a baton, and that was it, and that would suffice and to go de confronting dangerous criminals, as the case may be. Things have changed. Even when you look at technology, we want the book, and with the typewriter, it's computerized now, and the systems that we use now, the technology, we didn't, had no forensic lab when you first started out. When you talk about DNA and, and all kind of analysis they can do for drug testing mm -hmm. that we can do. So things have really changed and con constantly changing. It's, con it's a constant change now. You know, we are not just trying, uh, keeping abreast with what's happening in the world is not good enough. We have to be a move ahead. So every year we have to continue to look up what are the changes in policing. And, uh, and, you're, and, and you're dealing with the changing attitudes of, no, no, of people as no, well. No question about it, because, you know, um, you're dealing with a different group of persons that you deal with, but, you know, we cannot just throw ourselves back and say we cannot deal with it. Because most of us, when we grew up, uh, Mr. Jones, we came, we came from, from the home with respect, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. That was nothing that. So you might, come, you might have the officer coming into the training school. You have to spend six months dealing with discipline and those basic things. When I joined the police force, I was, that was it. That wasn't, yes, mm -hmm. they don't know how to teach that skills. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to teach people that. Mm -hmm. And so you talking about people grew up in church, all of us grew up in church, went to Sunday school and all that. Hmm, that's unheard of now. Rare, 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 rare. So you're dealing with a different type, a different mindset, and we have to face it. We cannot distance ourselves from it, because the, the type of recruits we have. When I joined the police force, I was told to follow orders, do as you told. Now the persons who are coming into the force are being encouraged to be thinkers. They are asking questions. You cannot get upset as a supervisor when the young officer asking, why do we do this? Why do we do that? I couldn't ask in time past my supervisor why. Mm. I just follow instructions. So, so, so even, even the, the way you uh, run the various departments, yes. uh, that has changed? Yeah, um, it, 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 it has changed. Um, when I say that, it's more participatory. Uh, so to speak. But is that a good thing? Uh, um, because you are running a disciplined force. No, I mean, we, we, we will not move away from the discipline. Mm. We will not move away from the discipline. But you must realize still that you are dealing with human beings. You see what I'm saying? And so there's some adjustments that you have to make in getting people involved. Because people are more exposed now. Our officers are coming in well qualified. You're not getting the officers who just coming in. Um, maybe who just passed the police examination. You come with people with doctor degrees. You come, so these are the type of people that you have to deal with. So they want to be challenged. They have this insatiable taste for learning. They want to jump on it right away. Mm. They're ready to go. Mm. In some police department, they talk about an accelerated promotion. So they quickly, to keep these people, they say, let's move them up pretty fast to maintain that type of people, maintain their interest. So you have more qualified applicants coming into RBPF today. And so we must be ready as an organization to adjust, to be able to accommodate these people, their way of thinking, because they can help us. The young people have a lot of ideas. When we looked at our debates and speech competition, when you looked at the debaters, when you looked at how they tackled some topics, even as senior officers, we had to be taking notes. Mm. You had to be taking notes, mm. because there's some talent that exists in this organization that is coming from the Bahamian society it's only going to make us better. So when um, the seniors um, and the old timers, I call them, uh, those who are retired, and uh, many of them are watching and listening to, to you uh, both today, when they say to you that, well, uh, the level of discipline in the force back then uh, was higher than it is today, how do you, how do you respond to that? Uh, um, we, 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 we must be honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you're dealing with a different population, like I'm saying, because we, when we recruit, we have to recruit right from here. We don't go to no strange land to recruit. We see this indiscipline that exists in our society. Mm -hmm. And so you will be hard pressed sometimes to pick out a discipline. One time ago, when you say you want a good officer, you go straight to the family islands. Mm -hmm. But it's no difference now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One time ago, the, the fella coming from Inalgua, Cat Island, Elutra, you had no worries about them mm -hmm. with discipline. 
Is there an enthusiasm on the part of young uh, Bahamians to, to join the Royal Bahamas Police Force? I, I think that there is. Just recently we went into one of the preschools. There were 25 kids in that classroom and all wanted to be police officers. So it speaks to what, what it is that we are producing in our community or to our communities. So yes, I do feel that way. We have a, a number, of, a large number of applicants who are waiting to hear okay. from us. Yeah, but every little boy wanted to be a policeman, right? Because yeah. they see what it is that we produce. They, they, they admire the, <laughs> the, um, the uniform. And if you ask yeah. my cameraman and the producers here, all of them as, as, <laughs> five, six-year-old yes, boys yes. wanted to be policemen. Yes. But I'm talking about uh, when you go through our communities today and you find uh, young people you know, who are 18 and 20-something, uh, do they have this um, yearning or enthusiasm to join your we, organization? We, we still see that mm -hmm. because you still find that there are a lot of young people who want to give service to the community. Mm -hmm. So we are finding that there are still a large number of, especially young men, we got to give them a, a chance. And we, we see that they, they do want to join the organization, and we are encouraging them. Not, not, well, this is police month, and I must sell the police force, but in any positive way that we can encourage them in whatever field that they desire, then we send that message, go ahead, go for it, you can do it. And yes, to answer your questions directly, yes, there are lots of young people who no want question. to join police force. But you, you must be challenged, um, because you are dealing uh, with one pool, uh, of, of Bahamians. And from that pool, you are seeking to extract uh, the best for your force. Um, in terms of the uh, quality or standard of education of people who you are bringing on the Royal Bahamas Police Force today, uh, speak to that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you we have a lot of qualified people that are coming in, but George, you have to strike an equilibrium or balance. balance, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I can have an, off, uh, an, an individual who really wants to be a police officer. He can meet the basic requirements of passing the entrance examinations or might have some BJCs or BGCs. He might not, he or she might not have a degree. But we could find out in some cases, when we recruit that type of place in some time, they turn out to be some of your better police officers because it comes from the heart. I can have qualifications, but I can have a bad attitude. I can have the spirit of the country owe me something. I can come, I am dead to something. So we have to strike a balance, because I can go in one zone saying, you must have a bachelor's degree coming to force, and that's it. And I come out with a bachelor's degree, I work out there say, I don't think I should be walking the beat with a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. I don't think I should be um, on the patrol, I don't think I should be in the family, I should be in New Providence, you should give me a nice office, you should put me in a nice setting, I should be in the patrol car, you should have all of this as the case may be. So you have to strike the balance. You have to strike the balance, and I'm saying that is what we're doing with our training. When we evaluate persons, because some people are sent or forced by the parents to say, go join the police force as a status, mm -hmm. and they might be qualified until you get something better, because we find out they did one year, and then they said they don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. Or some people have, it has happened in the past, they said, you could almost tell that they were forced to come in, and the duress, mm -hmm. and they left. So what I'm saying to you, we want the best, not always the best who have an educational background. There's some basic requirements that you want, but there are some things people are trainable. I've seen officers who came up with no requirements when they have bachelor's, they have doctor's degrees. So the force gives you that quest for learning because you go, always go on training course. You're exposed to a lot of things, and you are forced to say, let me pick up a book, book and read. Your force. The police force is only as effective as the uh, support it gets from the community. Um, let's speak to that. Uh, the extent to which the community, the Bahamian community, whether uh, you're talking about um, uh, business, uh, businesses and uh, people in civil society or the average man on the street. The extent to which they uh, support the Royal Bahamas Police Force and you are encouraged by their support. Are you really happy with the support that you get from the uh, community generally? I think we are, we are happy that the community is partnering with us as we go through our communities to, to, to conduct our duties. So yes, we are comfortable with the support, but we encourage more support. 
Mm. We definitely would encourage more support. We go out into the streets, we get out of the vehicles from time to time, more, more often now than before. So we meet face to face with the public. We go into civil society, civic organizations, and we speak to them on their level. Uh, we go into the schools, we speak to the kids. So we can see the support coming to our organization. But of course, we would we would encourage even more support mm -hmm. as we continue to serve. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Dean, um, we uh, have heard of incident, incidents where uh, you have young people who have disrespected the the police in in many ways, mm -hmm. and um, and it, po police over the years uh, found it difficult really to deal um, with uh, a number of individuals, young people in various communities. Now, you disabused me some time ago of this uh, idea that the police are afraid to go into certain communities. Um, but I still keep hearing that um, certain areas are, are very difficult for, for your officers. Jones, I don't know. No area in New Providence is a no-go zone for the police force. We don't have those garrison communities here. We don't have that here. Um, but one day I'll just pick you up in a patrol car. Mm. Me and you will ride around Nassau. And you, you pick the corner, and I'll go through it. You pick the corner, I'll jump out. You pick the corner, and we'll do it. There's no go any place in New Providence that we can go any police officers, you can go. Now, if a person is afraid to go in there, he might be involved in some underhand behavior we don't know about, that he don't want to go with his associates. But I can tell you, I don't know if any police officer came, ever came and say, he is afraid to go in a particular area, or he cannot go in a particular area. Mm -hmm. That don't exist in the Royal Bahamas Police Force. And you know, but speak to, to, you to, talked to, about yes. mm -hmm. you talked about this relationship with the Bahamian public. Immaterial to what you hear. Sometimes, you, if you listen to the talk shows, if you listen to sometimes how the police are bombarded, if you listen to how people do that, you really think we don't get the support. But the support that we enjoy here in this Royal Bahamas Police Force is unmatched in the Caribbean. I've traveled to a number of our Caribbean countries. Mm -hmm. And they ask us, how do you, how does that happen? How you still got that kind relationship? Because we have a problem. We have a problem. I don't want to name those countries, but they have a problem. No, we can name them, Trinidad <laughs> and Jamaica. They have a problem. They, have a problem. They, have a problem. They, they don't have that relationship with the community. They are fighting that. We have it, Jones. We don't rest on our laurels. We have to keep working it every day. But what the community is demanding is respect. Everybody. And that's what we continue to tell our officers, immaterial to poison station in life, show is mutual respect. Once you maintain that type of thing, you will garner more support. Um, I, I'm glad you mentioned mutual respect uh, because I was going to ask you the converse. Uh, uh, conversely, you have uh, some members of the community who are suggesting that some young officers are very disrespectful. And, um, you know, a, a, an employee of mine the other day uh, told me of how he was pulled uh, 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 over by an officer. The officer couldn't even tell him why he was pulled over, and uh, the officer was quite insulting. Um, are, are officers trained, for instance, to, to, to give respect? And they're dead training. And just like as a parent, you can have five children, you give them the basic training. Mm. Someone, for some strange reason, strays away. If you look at every family, there's someone. Everybody was taught in the morning to pray, to say their prayers, right from wrong. For some reason, this one deviates off course. And so that's why we put systems in place. That's why we have supervisors. That's why we have a complaints and corruption unit to that the public has somewhere to go. They have some recourse they can go here um so we are constantly faced with a challenge and not this is not only germane to the royal bahamas police force like i can tell you we have a societal problem and not necessarily six months it's going to cause that transformation not necessary we do our best sometimes some poison slip under the guise under the pretense for six months then we find out the true colors that happens anywhere but when you discover it, what do you do? Do you hide underneath the map? Do we when we when the public make complaints, do we continue? Because he might be our favorite officer, we just say it's not so and keep what we watch this slippery slope. If we don't deal with it right away, that's why we're running a course now at the training school on ethics, ethical behavior of officers. And so it's constant, it's moving, 
We are constantly training, but we ask the members of the public, when you see, on, the only way we can be better, particularly from the senior command, if members of the public don't report it to us. You should not be afraid. If an officer's out there, get his number. Tell who he is. We want to deal with him. Maybe he might have to go back and do some retraining. There might be some background problems that we might have missed. So, and then we ask Bahamian public to be honest, because when we go do background check on these people in these communities, mm -hmm. they said that he's the best thing, he's a nice fella, choir boy, and they know better sometimes. But we rely on members of the public. Uh, very good. Well, what are we going to do right now? We're going to take a break on our program, and um, when we return, uh, hopefully we would have a conversation uh, with uh, the Commissioner of Police and other senior officers of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. It's Police Month, the month of March, uh, as they celebrate the 178th anniversary of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. We take this break. We'll come right back. Thank <laughs> you. 